Keith here and in this video I'm going to look at past version 3 again. Now the authors of the package have done some updates and bug fixes and it's now a lot better than when I looked at it earlier this year and let me say I'm not criticizing these guys I think it's fantastic that they're doing this work and making it freely available but I did have issues when I looked at it uh, around about January. Now to start with the interface looks a lot more modern it's a lot cleaner it's less cluttered and the menus when they operate this way are a lot easier to navigate again less cluttered and by grouping things under headings it's going to be a lot easier for people to find what they need to do and also learn about multivariate statistics. So everything you can see here is grouped under the heading of ordination and we've got a range of different methods for doing that. Other things, um, bands here is helpful for keeping track of where you are in the data file. The way in which it operates is quite different to past version 2 and I'll come back to that when I've got some data in here. They've also now added in row attributes and column attributes. Now I'll look at the column attributes again when I've got data in. Here I want to look a bit at the row attributes. Now one thing I think is still a bit clunky here is setting colors and symbols because as far as I can tell the only way to do it that doesn't work. The only way to do it is by clicking on each individual row and that's going to be very slow if you've got a significant amount of data. So what I'm going to do is something a little bit odd. So to start with the setup for this set of data doesn't matter too much. I'm working with my simulated data with the three oil platforms leaking into the ocean with oil getting incorporated in bottom, bottom sediments and you can see how I've got the sampling set up here two impact stations immediately south of the platforms and two further away so those are all impact and then controls off to each side I've got a north set and a south set and a set to the west and a set to the east so those are the four factors. If I go over to the text version make it a little bit smaller you can see I've got columns for each of those variables north south east west impact control and then the data and a code labeling the rows in the first column. Now the thing I'm going to do that's odd is I'm actually going to get the data into past version 3 by going through past version 2. Now past version 2 does not like text at all so I'm using this data set here where I've coded things with numbers so let's copy the whole thing past version 2 edit mode is on edit labels is on paste and edit mode and edit labels off. Now what I wanted to do to start with is simply label every site. In other words give each site its own color and symbol. And in pass mode version 2 when edit mode is off and edit labels is off I can just select a column as I've done here, edit and numbers to color symbols done. That was easy. So let me save this. Uh, let's put it on the desktop for ease of finding. Actually I'll put it here. I'll just call it data and give it the dat because past does not do that automatically. Save now over to past version 3, file open and the data and looky here first column 
as symbols with colors and that was easy. Now in past version 3 the modes are select or drag rows and columns. It works almost exactly the opposite of past version 2 and that was one thing that was confusing me until I spent some time fiddling with it yesterday. So at the moment I'm in select mode and if I go back to Excel and over to the text I can click, sorry, I can select and copy into past version 3 and actually I need to get the columns in the right order, don't I? Um, which they are. Done. Location, West East, IVC, Impact versus Control and Zone North South. Site can stay as 1 to 8. Row attributes. Okay, here are the names. Back in here. Copy the text there. Over to past version 3. Done. Row attributes off. Column attributes. Now, name is pretty obvious. Type. Okay. And if I click here, you can see I have four types. Group, ordinal, nominal, binary. Binary is 0, 1. So in environmental data, that's usually presence, absence. Uh, ordinal is for a ranking variable. And nominal is for text. And group defines a factor. So all of these three variables here would actually be groups in a factorial analysis of variance. And so now they're labeled as G up the top. This one, although it's numbers, is really nominal because they're just names. And I could replace them. And when I get that far, I'm going to save it. And you can see it's over it in the existing file. Now, an analyses. As far as I can tell, the analyses so far are just the same as in past version 2. There may be some things they've added in, but I can't see a lot in my investigation so far. Again, the menus are tidy, so ANOVA is out here with its uh, options. Um, one way ANOVA, incidentally, has been changed so that it now uses the standard format for defining, uh, for defining analyses, which is a grouping factor next to a variable for analysis. Um, actually, now that I think about it, I want to make that grouping. Um, save again. I always save. I'm paranoid about saving. Now, I'm in select mode. If I want to, in select mode, incidentally, I can edit the file. You've seen I've done copy and paste and I can go in and edit the values. If I want to move things around, I've got to go drag, rows, columns, sort. And I want to move site over here next to the environmental variables. And I'll show you why. Oh, and before anything else, I want to make the uh, depths here positive numbers. So that would be transform, evaluate expression, minus 1 times x. Done. It has its really nice attributes, does PAST. Now, I'm going to do a PCA, which I've done a number of videos on already, and normally I just selected these columns. But now I'm selecting the grouping factor first. You will see why. Ordination, PCA. Now here's one thing that's new and better. 
is a tabbed panel display for the results instead of little windows popping up all over the place. Now, for, th for this analysis, I've selected the raw data here and I haven't done any sort of transformation or normalization. When the environmental variables are different things and on different scales, we could normalize in order to make the analysis more useful. I can actually do the same thing here in PAST by picking a correlation. That will do exactly the same thing. Now, if you note, the numbers over here haven't changed. Uh, what I need to do is recompute. Nice thing here is it will actually deal with missing values. Now I can go to the scree plot. Scree plot says about 64% first axis, another 20. Uh, three or four percent second axis so together those two are covering most of the variation uh, and there's about ten or eleven percent that's left for axis three or four so that means axis one and two are all I really need to look at. The loadings plot shows me for axis one depth and nutrients are loading positively on that axis sediments negatively and hydrocarbons are accounting for a bit of the variation. PC axis 2 and it's mostly hydrocarbons, the pollutant in the system. Depth and sediment not doing much, nutrients doing a little bit. Scores are here if I want to take them out um, and plot them in a different application. Here's the scatter plot. Now, instead of right-clicking, it's graph settings over here. Bigger symbols, please. I like point symbols and thick lines. And I'm going to check filled regions here. Won't do anything at the moment. But let's have a further look. Um, here's one change. I can put on row labels, which you used to be able to do in PAST but I can also put on group labels and that may be better. And I can also do convex holes and that's where the shading comes in. So you get really what I think is quite a nice plot of this PCA with the samples from the same sites grouping together and have it showing up as shaded regions and if you go back to the spreadsheet you can change the colors of these and there are now many many options if you're not happy with what's showing up here as the default. I can also put on the biplot. I think that gets a bit cluttered with the convex hulls so I'm inc inclined to prefer this sort of display here. Now I use the site numbers for the grouping variable there you can of course use whatever you think is appropriate. Um, I can export as a picture in various formats down there. I can copy here, paste into a web processor document. Uh, generally I wouldn't recommend printing the graph on its own. Okay, so that's PAST version 3 which I think is now looking very nice especially once you get used to the new way that click mode works. The other analyses, as I say, don't seem to have changed greatly. If I see new things that I think are useful, I'll come along and add more videos on version 3.